Hello, everybody, and welcome to our new Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. I'm Terry Barr. We're going to talk about taxes today, tax season. We are in the midst of it, and we've got a great tax expert to get us all caught up on the changes and also some new information just coming in. Kimberly Washington, tax expert, tax analyst with Forbes Advisor. Thank you for being here today, Kimberly. Thank you, Terry. Thanks for always inviting me back. I really do appreciate being on your show. Oh, and we appreciate you, especially with the information you're bringing in today. There's a new survey um, and it's got some interesting numbers when you look uh, sort of what people are talking about today compared to even a year ago. What did you find in this new survey, Kimberly? Right. Some very interesting things. The first thing is that 50% of people are actually expecting that this year they're going to get a lower tax refund. And another very interesting point is that 42%, while they are expecting that they will get a refund, this number is actually a lot lower than the previous tax filing year, was 77% of individuals expected a refund. And we believe it has a lot to do with some of the confusion around maybe the child tax credit, um, just all of the different challenges that this tax season brings. And so that's why you see more and more people kind of going into this tax season and thinking, okay, I'm not going to get as much as I expected before. I may not get anything at all. So it's going to be very interesting this tax season as we move forward with it. Yeah, no kidding. You mentioned some of those uh, topics too. And it seems like there are some uh, big changes for this year, there, there's three of them and, and a couple you alluded to. So what are you finding that uh, taxpayers need to sort of keep an eye on as they get together all the information for this year's taxes? Right, so child tax credit, child tax credit, and child tax credit. Oh, wow. right? that's, the first, <laughs> that's just the first change, right? And so that's gonna be a lot of different changes as it relates to reporting the child tax credit. We know that last year in 2021, there were changes Many people opted in to receive the monthly child tax payments, but those payments are going to impact your tax return this year. Keep in mind the tax credit is valued at up to $3,600, and of course, if that's only if you have a child under the age of six. The amount is up to $3,000 if you have a child ages six to 17. But what individuals are going to see is that if you did receive monthly payments, you're going to receive a letter from the IRS, and you may have received that letter already. And let me just back up and say this. If you did receive that letter, be careful because not an IRS is saying that information may be wrong in the letter. So that throws us out of sudden challenges with that. Yeah. But you can head over to the IRS.gov, find out the information, how much you actually receive for the child tax credit, because you're going to need that information to file your tax return this year. But typically as it works is that if you did receive payments last year, you may be entitled to an additional 50% this year when you file. And so that's the biggest thing. I'm saying generally, of course, there's some different rules and some exceptions, but typically you'll be able and entitled to additional child tax credit. But again, you may have to qualify, of course, for those credits. So that's going to be a big change. You definitely want to rely on your letter, but also make certain it's correct. Go to irs.gov, look in your online account and make certain that you have all the correct information when it comes to child tax credit so that you can correctly claim it and get the refund you deserve if you are entitled to one. Wow, okay, that's really important. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that uh, website as an additional resource. That's really smart, thank you for that. Um, what about so many of us receive that recovery uh, rebate kind of tax credit? What, what do we do about that? Right. So this is if you're someone that say, okay, well, what is the recovery rebate tax credit? So this is just simply that number one, if you receive your stimulus payment, now when you file your tax return, it's referred to as a recovery rebate tax credit. But keep in mind, if you did receive the full $1,400 last year, then the, that was actually the third round of stimulus payments, mm -hmm. you don't really need to do much. You know, you're not asking for more money because you already received it. But if you're someone who received maybe a partial amount or didn't receive it at all, you can use what's called a recovery rebate tax credit. You can enter your information. You're also going to receive a letter from the IRS that indicate, okay, how much did you actually receive? You're going to use that information to determine whether or not you're entitled to some more money. And if you are, you'll claim this credit using the worksheet and you make certain that you have it. And of course, that can actually boost your tax refund at tax time. So you do want to make sure you take note of it 
And this is even the case if you're someone who's not required to file, you may still want to, of course, file that tax return because you may be entitled to this additional money. Oh, that's good to hear. Okay. Yeah. So there could be some benefits in some of this. <laughs> yeah, definitely some benefits. Yeah. Okay. And, and, Another one that I am especially interested in comes to um, itemizing, not itemizing, when you give to charity, donate. I'm always confused by this one. So set me straight. How has this one changed? Right. So first thing, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what is itemizing, what it's not. So Excellent. when you itemize deductions, you may be someone who basically have maybe mortgage interest that you pay on your home. You also pay charitable contributions. Maybe you give to a church. Um, you could be someone that pay, pay of course, state taxes and real estate taxes. Mm. Well, you have a ton of deductions. And so if those deductions, all of those, and you tally them up, and then more than what's called the standard deduction, this is a basic amount that the IRS will give you, then you will use itemized deductions. Now, with the recent, and I'm saying recent, but it's been about three years, of course, but the, the latest tax law, major tax changes um, many people, they don't itemize anymore because the standard deduction at that time, about 2017, 2018, it actually doubled. So if you're someone who uses the standard deduction, you're still entitled to this new tax break. And what, how it works for 2021 is that if you gave to a charitable organization, let's say you gave up to $300 in cash, you can take this deduction even if you don't itemize. So this could be a little bit of help when you file your tax return. Yeah. If you're married, that number actually increases to $600. So you do want to keep that in mind. You want to keep your receipts, but this is something that you can take advantage of at this time. And again, you don't need to itemize in order to take advantage of this. Okay. Wow. Three really important changes. And uh, thank you, Kimberly, for walking us through those. What would you say is the bottom line? What do we need to be thinking about right now? Uh, people may be getting their papers together and just trying to get started on all of this. What should we be thinking about? I think it's a couple of different things you want to think about. But the bottom line, number one, is that, of course, tax deadline this year is April 18th. A lot of people don't realize it's not the 15th. It's actually April 18th. That's the first thing you do want to keep in mind. The second thing, you want to make certain that you file early, as soon as you can. As so many benefits for filing early. The IRS has already stated that they're going to have a lot of challenges this tax season. So you want to avoid those challenges and get your tax return in it early. But you also want to make sure that it's accurate because if you file an incomplete tax return, of course, that can slow down the process again. And so you're looking at other delays. And last but certainly not least, make sure you file electronically and use direct deposit if you know you're getting a refund. You don't want to send a paper tax return to the IRS we saw last year with a backlog of tax returns. <laughs> yes. You may be waiting up to 120 days. In some cases, people are waiting more. So you don't want to do that. So that's the major things that you want to think about this tax filing season. Okay. So April 18th, that's the deadline. Yeah. Can we file right now or is it too early at this point? It's not too early. Tax season actually started January 24th. So yeah, this is the time. Now you do have to keep in mind. If you're someone who receives a child tax credit or an earned income tax credit, you may, you can, while you still can file early, the IRS is going to wait till mid-February to process your refund. So you do want to keep that in mind, but still filing as soon as you're able to get your accurate tax return into the IRS. Okay. Oh my goodness. I don't know what we would do without you. Our tax expert, tax analyst, Kimberly yeah. Washington with Forbes Advisor. My goodness, Kimberly. Lots to go over, but such important stuff, especially right now. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we will talk with you again because uh, we'll want to <laughs> we'll want to be checking in on ourselves and also everybody else as they're getting ready for taxes. We'll we'll talk to you again in about a month, Kimberly, and I'll look okay, forward to that. Good. Thank you so much. Thank okay. You. Thank you everybody for listening to this Pennywise podcast. And as always, you can find our Pennywise podcast wherever you enjoy your podcasts. And we thank you so much for listening.